Remember PBS Kids? Remember Fox Kids? Remember Kids WB? We remember. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 live action kids shows that give us a feeling of nostalgia. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at children's programs that make us long for a simpler time. We've excluded shows that were marketed more to the teen crowd, like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, regardless of how nostalgic they might make us feel. You are a witch with real magical powers, and now that you're 16, you can use them. And you wanted something from The Gap. Also, some animation use is okay, as long as there's live action in the show. Number 10, Zaboomafoo. We grew up with several educational programs that made us appreciate nature and wildlife, one of the best of which was this daytime Emmy winning series. Zaboomafoo followed brothers Chris and Martin Kratt, but it was the titular lemur who stole the show. Hey, Zob, you want some salad? No way! He's eating leaves! <laughs> I guess that's why they call it Toss Salad. Brought to life through puppetry and a real-life cockerel shefawk, Zabu was just one of the many creatures that dropped by Animal Junction. Each episode contained a theme that helped audiences understand how animals live and how we can aid them. Why are they sticking their faces in the water? <laughs> that's how puppies drink. The creators got these messages across with fun animation, infectious music, and an all-around upbeat attitude. Plus, how many shows actually encourage you to get off the couch and go exploring? They're going on a cool adventure and they don't know what's in store. They're coming from the closet and they're headed out the door. See you, Zav. Number 9, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee's Thinking. Fresh off the success of Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Pee Wee's Playhouse was every bit as bizarre and hilarious as Mr. Herman's silver screen outing. What should we do now? I know! Let's go look at my toys! <laughs> the series naturally centered on comedian Paul Rubens as Pee Wee, whose outlandish attitude was only matched by his over-the-top playhouse. The playhouse boomed with so much personality that it practically sprung to life. No, seriously, virtually everything in the house could spring to life. While the show had its fair share of animated segments, the live-action material somehow managed to be even cartoonier. Aren't those nice pajamas? Yes, thank you! Where kids gravitated towards the lively set pieces and colorful characters, adults appreciated the surreal humor and the wacky sentiment that captured the wonder of being a child. Wow! Foil! Let's see how big my foil ball is today! <laughs> Number 8, Reading Rainbow. Making an educational show is easy. Making an educational show that's engaging, however, is an entirely different story. For over two decades, Reading Rainbow entertained children and kept them hooked on books. Their story is served up in enemy pie. Often enlisting a celebrity narrator, each episode promoted a different book and explored how it could appeal to young readers. Speaking of which, kids also gave their two cents in the book review segment. Don't Laugh at Me tells us what it's like to be different and to be laughed at because we're different. At the center of everything was Kunta Kinte himself, LeVar Burton, whose welcoming presence always made kids excited to read. After the show's cancellation in 2006, a 2014 revival campaign on Kickstarter accumulated $6 million. So yeah, it's safe to say that fans still think of it fondly. Hi. I'm LeVar Burton. Number 7, Punky Brewster. This series followed a wide-eyed girl who gets ditched by her parents, looks after a canine sidekick, and eventually finds a loving home with a foster father. Think Little Orphan Annie with a 1980s twist. We got him! We got him! Excuse her. My first set of shoulder pads left me giddy too. <laughs> Punky Brewster is perhaps best remembered for its quirky characters and wacky escapades. In the midst of all the shenanigans, though, the show also addressed more mature issues, like abandonment, divorce, and what it really means to be a family. Punky, if you try your hardest, you can do anything. On top of that, it wasn't afraid to go dark at times. 
The Perils of Punky two-parter still gives us nightmares even years later. The evil spirit has magic. Big deal. Maybe it is a big deal. Of course, for every grim moment, there was something colorful to even things out. Number six, Wishbone. What's the story, Wishbone? What's this you're dreaming of? Another show that encouraged children to pick up a book. Wishbone followed a Jack Russell Terrier with a surprisingly advanced reading level. And aren't you lucky? You can hear me. Well, what were you expecting? A cat? No matter what was going on in the lives of Wishbone and his human owners, our well-read protagonist could always find parallels within a respected work of literature. It's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, written in 1876 by the American author Mark Twain. Alongside the contemporary story, each episode reenacted a classic tale, with Wishbone taking on a leading role. While the show was cute, funny, and whimsical, it rarely dumbed down its source material. Hello! Hello, Huckleberry Finn! Come out if you're not afraid to face Tom Sawyer the Pirate! I ain't afraid of nobody or nothing. Even with a dog actor involved, it treated stories like Romeo and Juliet and Frankenstein with sophistication and respect, which in turn made young viewers want to visit their local library. After months of exhaustive research and intense preparation, Frankenstein was ready to test his creation. Number five, Goosebumps. Stop it! What are you doing? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Shit is in your face, it was the best. Deep down, there's a part of every kid that wants to be challenged with something scary. That's why so many of us read R.L. Stein's best-selling book series and watched the Goosebumps TV show. I want it up! I want it up now! Take it off me! I hate this face! I hate this face! I hate it! An anthology of horror, Goosebumps adapted some of Stein's most popular stories to the small screen. It was both spooky and delightful to see tales like Welcome to Dead House, A Night in Terror Tower, and The Haunted Mask brought to life. It also made us forever afraid of dummies and basements. Stay out of the basement! Creative, atmospheric, and darkly humorous, Goosebumps was easily the creepiest show kids grew up with in the 90s. Well, with one exception, but more on that later. Stay away from me! Stay away! Number four, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Back in your school days, chances are your class got excited whenever the teacher put on a video. If the video happened to be an episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy, it was considered the ultimate jackpot. Compass is just a magnet that's free to move. Even outside of school, though, Bill Nye never failed to entertain his audience. With a background in comedy and science, Nye made the series not just educational, but also seriously fun. Now, only three things can stick to men. Iron, nickel, and cobalt. Experiencing science from this unique perspective, kids were able to learn without even realizing they were doing it. You might not remember anything you read in a textbook, but Bill's lessons on everything from flight to motion continue to stick with us. Now, genes are made of a very complicated chemical called deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Number three, are you afraid of the dark? The 90s were a relatively child-friendly time for television, with plenty of light-hearted programming made for kids. But there were still a few shows that pushed the envelope by delivering a refreshing dosage of darkness. Every episode of this anthology series was told in the form of a campfire story, courtesy of the Midnight Society. Though it revolved around a group of teenagers, Are You Afraid of the Dark is considered a children's fantasy and sci-fi series. And it sure knew how to make our kitty hearts race and spines tingle, dreaming up eerie monsters that would fuel our nightmares for weeks. Mom, the kitchen just blew up. If you think you can handle the show now that you're older, we dare you to go back and watch the tale of the ghastly grinner without jumping out of your seat. Number two, The Muppet Show. This is what we call the Muppet Show. If Sesame Street shaped your preschool years, then The Muppet Show more than likely defined your elementary school days. 
Of course, this Emmy-winning variety show wasn't exclusively for kids. Didn't you like my last joke? Yes, if you promise it's your last joke. Creator Jim Henson set out to make a series that could appeal to the whole family, and he succeeded with catchy songs, inspired comedy, and unforgettable characters, not to mention a slew of memorable celebrity guest hosts. Back to the While the show ended its run in 1981, the gang reenacted the Muppet Show theme almost 30 years later in a 2011 feature film. It's time to get things started on the most sensational, inspirational, celebrational, Muppetational. This is what we call the Muppet Show. For anybody that grew up with Kermit the Frog, it was impossible not to get choked up with happy tears and nostalgic chills. And thank you all. Join us next time on the Muppet. Number one, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? It's hard to believe that this childhood classic concluded way back in 2001, a mere two years before Fred Rogers himself passed away. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood had an incredible run, however, epitomizing childhood for over 30 years. Oh, sure I want to, but I'll need someone to stay with my television friend. Sporting a cardigan and a kind, gentle persona, Rogers would welcome viewers into his home and speak to them directly about various life lessons. Above all else, Rogers taught us about the power of make-believe, demonstrating how you can create so much with so little. To this day, the neighborhood trolley acts as a symbol for everything Rogers stood for, reminding us that every person is special. For that, Fred will forever be our neighbor. Let's have some make-believe. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.